So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Zhang Peng Wang from Harvard College. I'm a junior CS student. So today I'm going to present to you RACIS, Facet Execution in Rackets. So what is RACIS? RACIS is a racket-based micro-powered language that can perform dynamic, uh, inform, uh, can perform dynamic facet execution to enhance uh, information flow control. So information flow control is like basically you don't want to uh, you don't want to have third body that has off, uh, authority authorization to make the private data flows to public data, and it has two ways to to implement the information flow control. One is like static, so one of the example using static uh, information flow control is a like type system. Another one is uh, dynamic, which we use in uh, we use to in, to enhance the dynamic information flow control, which is uh, facet execution. And RACIS is a racket with facet execution. So why is facet execution important? Because we don't want some uh, hacker or a third party to snoop around and read the data, the private data, as the program runs. So to demonstrate the concept of facet execution, uh, we have an example the classic battleship game. So in this game, uh, we have a function, make board, that in, uh, initially creates an empty board, which is represented by an empty list. And in this board, we, um, in this game, we also have a function, add pieces, that takes board and x, y, and add x, y pairs using a console into the list, into the board. And the board is a list of x, y, console pairs which are coordinates. And in a physical, in a physical game, Alice or Bob are separated by the wall. So the wall is a, the, where, uh, the barrier that keeps Alice or Bob from seeing each other's board. So in our setting, this privacy is enforced by a web server written in RACIS. So Alice can ask the web server to see her board and once identity is verified by the by the web server, she can see her board like this. As we can see, player one is Alice, and we see Alice board as Alice, player one, player one. So we see the full board of Alice. And but if Bob try to see Alice board, he cannot. Um, the web server checks the identity and checks that. Bob is not Alice, so he cannot get access to Alice board, and he will see something like this. As it, as we can see, play, player two is Bob, and he's trying to see player one, Alice, the board. So he's seeing nothing. See an empty board. So in general, we don't want Bob and any other person except Alice herself to perform any operation that may allow them to see and modify Alice data. So this is what dynamic information control about, and this is what facet execution does. So to perform um, facet execution, we first need a facet value, which is a decision tree that says who owns the data, what the owners should see, uh, which is a private data, or in this case, Alice data, and what everyone else should see, in this case, um, is non-Alice data which is public data. And Alice to see her board like this, represented by a list of x, y pairs. And everyone else to see an empty board. And facets are often written in a ternary style uh, that consists of Alice, which is the runtime representat representation of Alice security label. And the left side, the left side is of uh, her data, her private data, which is a uh, list at the Alice board, a list of X, Y pairs. And the right side is an NT board, an NT list, which is non-Alice data. So to make it work, we also need to fix up the language semantics to propagate the facet values. Um, so for example, we have a function, game over, that checks, that takes the board as an input and check if it's is empty or not to determine if it's uh, game over or not. 
So in fancy execution, Alice board will be represented as Alice, uh, a list of X, Y, P, Alice board, and MP board. And the result after the evaluation should be Alice, false, and true. So first, we pass the fancy value Alice, Alice board, uh, MP board into the function game over. And fancy application splits the execution into two branches. Um, the, the left one is a positive branch, positive label branch, and the right part is a negative label branch. And we also update the program counter so that by, by adding the label into it so that you can check which branch was taken. So I will explain more about program counter in a later slide. And the answers from both evaluations are joined after return to construct a new fancy value. Uh, as if we, we evaluate each branch, we can see at the end that the fancy value, the new fancy value will be Alice, false, and true. So what is a program counter? A program counter is a collection or set of positive or negative labels. Uh, for example, a positive label is added to PC when a split executes the positive branch of a facility value, and it's the same goes for the negative label. And it also allows us to build facility values correctly and mutation, mutation so that we can change the value of a reference. So other forms need to be changed too. So if splits facets to avoid leaking information via control flow, and the set bank builds facets if the PC, the program counter, is not empty. So we pass, we have an example, and we pass uh, this facet value, Alice 1, 0, into if function, a uh, small part of if function. And we split on if. So in x becomes uh, Alice 1 star. Star represents a lazy failure, and we use it as a default value for a sec bank because we do, uh, it basically mean nonce. It's a placeholder so that we can do it. And then we evaluate the right branch. And x is updated to at least 1, 0. And star, the star disappears because 0 takes place. So to build a facet value, we first need a security label. So we need to understand how to represent Alice at runtime. So in our setting, security labels are, are predicates that can decide whether or not to reveal the information. And these predicates can, uh, are like the policies, and they are interchangeable, like privacy policies. So to give an example, like this very simple policy or predicate, in the real life, we don't do it like this. So we use a lambda function that takes username as an input and check it against Alice. I mean, it means it's very simple predicate to give some intuition about the, the, uh, the policies. And we also add a special label creation form to dynamically ge uh, generate the policy and bind them to a statically scoped name using the let label form. So inside the let label form, we have the label name, the policy, the predicate, the, the label's predicate, and the code that refers to the label. So we also have an ob observe form in RASIS. And so what is observe form? So it basically is the only way you can get information out of RASIS, uh, out of the facet value in RASIS. So a good analogy is that uh, a facet value is like a box with two compartments. Um, the observed form uh, is like a, a keyhole that can open one of the compartments, but not both. And the policy is like a key that can have access to the box. So without the keyhole, even you have the right key, there's no way you can extract information out of the box. So to observe facet value, we provided the facet value to observe the label to eliminate and the policy argument. Like this. So as you can see, Alice here is the, the label. 
and at least with the quotation mark is the policy argument, and the S4 is the is the passive value to op to be observed. <coughs> and in this case, since it matched with the labels, the labels predicate and return true. So once the observed form knows that Alice is indeed Alice, it returns, it extracts the private data from from Alice board and returns Alice data. So how do we implement all of this? Um, so we basically use the full semantics of uh, facet execution. So you want to know all the details, like all the semantics of basic execution, you can check out paper. So RASI implement basic execution using racket macros. And it also provides macros for lambda, label creation, basic construction, observation, uh, reference, application, and then all. And we also implement program counter as a parameter. It basically means we parameterize the program counter so that it's dynamically scoped. So why, why is important and why the program counter is not statically scoped? It's because if the program counter is statically scoped, once we finish in executing the function, we'll lose all the contents from, from the program <coughs> counter. If we lose all the contents from the program counter, we cannot check if the label is in the program counter or not in order to proceed with the rest of the recipe programs. So to give some intuition about how REST is implemented, uh, we have, a, we have a, an example, the if markers implementation. So as you can see, we use uh, syntax parse, one of the racket markers to implement the if. And we, we parse the statement into guard uh, true expression, 46 expressions. So we first check if guard is faceted or not. If it is, we'll handle it differently. Otherwise, we treat it as a normal if. So first we check if the, if the label is, if, if the faceted value is, the label is in the program counter or not by, by checking if the label, the positive label or negative label is a same member of current PC, the program counter. If it is, we evaluate them uh, accordingly. Also, the recurve means we use let loop to recursively call, evaluate the branches. And otherwise, we split. So to split, first, we add the positive label, in this case, uh, positive Alice, to the PC, to the program counter. And then we perform the computation as Alice would see it. Then we consider everyone else by adding the negative uh, label, uh, negative Alice, into the program counter. And then we execute the branch as everyone else. Finally, once um, we ev evaluate those two branches, we merge the result from the, those pr two branches into a new facet by using construct facet optimize. So the construct facet optimize is just an optimized way to construct a facet value in canonical order. So to, um, to show that RASIS actually works as intended, we have a case study and we'll do a leaf demo uh, in the later size. So we have a, in this case study, we have a, ser a web server that allows seeing Alice or Bob's board as Alice or Bob. And we make a strike on the other player's board. And we tell you when the game is over. So we use facets to ensure that Bob or Alice cannot see each other's board. Uh, that means we have two web pages, uh, one for Alice board and one, one for Alice and one for Bob. And, and there are two options too. You see Alice board as Alice and see uh, Alice board as, uh, uh, as Bob and vice versa. So, the fans make sure that they cannot see it because um, it's implemented this way. 
and Bob or Alice cannot see the result of the moves until they win. So I'm going to do a very quick demo. So at first, we see Alice for as Alice, as the uh, pair one is here, it's Alice. And then we try to see it as Bob, and we cannot see anything. It's hidden away. And then we, it's the same if we swap it. And then we do a squat, strike, pair two strike, one, two. And you hit it, but Bob cannot see anything. And then you do, and we check the Alice board. And we see that it's gone. One, two. But Bob cannot see it. It's still empty. And So we see RESIS as a first step for basic execution in Racket. However, there are some areas we still need to work on in the future. So the first one is to scale RESIS up to all Racket so that you can incorporate basic execution into all aspects of Racket. Secondly, we, um, RESIS need to uh, interact with unfaceted libraries so that we don't have to rely on the existing libraries. And third is building real apps, larger apps, like uh, auto-grading server with RESIS so that more people can know about RESIS. And if you want to know all the details of uh, RESIS, you can check out Git repos. And finally, thank you. For right now, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. Um, the question he asked: Can we use contract to implement this? I, I, yeah. I, I mean, for right now, I don't know how to do it, but I will look into it because I think contract is one of the goal we want to achieve too. Yeah, yeah, There's, yeah. It, it can work out, but right now I just didn't let him to see it. Oh yeah, I was more just thinking like, if it's so good, are the policies so dynamic that you can then say like, okay, now now Bob can see this one spot, but not the other. Yeah, that's doable. example uh, doesn't quite show the power because in particular there's there's no piece of data that you want to have two views it's just a you see it all or you see nothing right mm -hmm. it seems like it'd be nice to have an example where you want to genuinely see the same value as differently for this example it seems like it would just be easier just to say like no 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 your li your data lives in you know this thread and this and this thread mm -hmm. so is it yeah are, are there Contrasting this with uh, with another uh, with the kind of uh, Jonathan Reese's uh, like kind of lambda based facet type approach, 
which is uh, um, basically it's argument passing effectively as uh, whether or not you have access to it. So um, I, I, it's another facet approach. So I was just kind of curious if your if, if that research came up in your your approach and what the the, the uh, <coughs> if it's an interesting contrast. Well, um, I'm not thinking about using the like so trying to improve. What's the name? The uh, Lambda. Jonathan Reese's wrote uh, a security kernel based on the lock of calculus. Okay. And it, uh, it, it, you can do facets in the same thing by basically having a procedure that wraps some other procedure. Mm -hmm. And then if you have access to that one, that's the, the only way that you end up having access effectively. And it's, it's like they're both facets effectively, but it's just two different ways of doing yeah. facets. So I was just curious if, if you do something. Well, I will look into it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.